The 80s became an era synonymous with major action stars ruling the silver screen and pumping lead, or their fists, into enemies. Of these stars, one of the biggest legends in the industry is Sylvester Stallone. Originally rising to stardom thanks to his role in writing and acting in Rocky, the franchise that truly sealed his legacy would be Rambo. However, this quintessential action series of the 80s almost never saw the light of day. With Rambo Last Blood releasing this month, let's go over the films leading up to it and their cinematic legacy. There's nobody standing in front of me. By 1972, the Vietnam War had been raging for over two decades. Popular American opinions over the war had shifted to a majority of the population strongly opposing it, with anti-war protests becoming culturally significant to America of the 60s. It also led to some amazing anti-war music. And we're gonna stop right there so we don't get a copyright claim. Unless we just did. With the protests of the war, also sadly came the protests of Vietnam War veterans. After World War II, the victorious American army returned to be celebrated by their peers at home, while Vietnam vets were often ostracized due to their participation in the war. This stark contrast was an even harsher reality for the roughly one-third of the vets who had unwillingly gone to war due to the draft. All of this led to inspiring David Morrell to write a book about the feelings these Vietnam War vets had upon returning to America. I had students just back from Vietnam who had a whole lot of trouble accepting me as an authority figure. Uh, many of them were younger than I was, and what gives you the right to tell us what to do when we've been over there risking our life for our country? So uh, I used to hang around after class to talk to them, and I thought what I would do was write a novel which was about a version of the students who might have had. This book would be titled First Blood and featured the character who we all know today, Rambo. The rights to the book and story were sold to Columbia Pictures, who subsequently sold it to Warner Brothers. Multiple versions of scripts were written, and three months into production, the project was canceled due to how close it was to the end of the Vietnam War and studios thinking nobody would want to watch it. 26 scripts, I believe, uh, went through three, four, five studios. Finally, First Blood began to see the light of day with Carol Co. taking notice of it and deciding to take a risk on it. They asked Sylvester Stallone if he would star in the role, and he quickly responded that he would, but had reservations. It was kind of a, a jinxed project. It had been around uh, to many actors and had gone through many changes with directors, and I was very nervous. As a matter of fact, I, the day of filming, I was hoping that it would never happen, that we would just go away. With Stallone so hesitant, the script was eventually given to him to rewrite, and he ran with it, turning the character more into his own. In the First Blood novel, Rambo is a much more angry character and shoots up an entire town, killing 16 people. Stallone rewrote him to be more sympathetic and to not directly kill anyone. First Blood sees John Rambo, the product of an intense training program to become a human weapon for the Vietnam War, who served in the war and honed his skills fighting there, seven years after his discharge, searching for his last living comrade. Upon learning of his buddy's death due to Agent Orange, Rambo aimlessly wanders across a small town in Washington. Here the sheriff, Will Teasel, harasses Rambo seeing him as someone who doesn't belong, and tries to force him to leave. Rambo refuses, and the sheriff brings him in for charges of vagrancy. Here, the police officers further mistreat Rambo, setting off his PTSD of being tortured during the Vietnam War and causing him to snap. He fights his way out of the sheriff's office, injuring many on the way, and escapes to a nearby forest to hide. Rambo showcases his stealth and guerrilla tactics to overcome the forces multiple times, all while avoiding directly killing any of them, including Chief Deputy Art Galt. That guy's, that guy's just an idiot. The film culminates in Rambo absolutely destroying the small town before turning himself in at the urging of his colonel, Sam Troutman. Clocking in at roughly three hours, the film was complete. And... What's that you say? Google says the runtime for First Blood is only one hour and 33 minutes. 
I'll let Stallone explain this one. The original cut came in at like, uh... No, 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 the real Stallone. This film, when we did it, uh, it was so bad, at least I thought. Right. And even my manager, we, we both went out, I think we both retched together in the alleys. <laughs> we tried to buy it back and burn the negative. Which film? Really? Really? First Blood. The, originally, it was three hours long. I stayed an hour and a half in the woods chasing guys. And then there'd be lines <laughs> like, um, the, the cop pulls me over and he goes, where do you think you're going? I go, did you ever see Easy Rider? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm Easy Walker. So how did and you I'm fix the movie? What well, did you do? I you said, here's it. a good idea. Cut out all my dialogue. Other people fill in the blanks. That's right. Like right. the Greek chorus, you know? And I think that works. And really then when well. you saw it played back, you said, this is a good movie. This works. Then we, you know. Howard, it went from three hours to 90 minutes. While the film received a mixed reception critically, it was still a major success. With a $14 million budget, Rambo ended up grossing $47 million domestically and $125 million worldwide. Unlike the future films, First Blood also stands out as the only film in the series to truly be about the message it's trying to send. Its roots in the original book show, with Rambo coming across as a conflicted character made to kill, but trying to live in an America that not only doesn't appreciate him, but also mistreats him. With the success of First Blood, a sequel was soon on its way. If you love the stealth elements and guerrilla tactics of Rambo's first outing, then you'll sure have loved the first Rambo outing. Unlike First Blood 1, the second film, written by Sylvester Stallone and James Cameron, throws all plausibility out of the window in favor of being an insane action movie. And really, when people think of Rambo, it's First Blood Part 2 and Rambo 3 that they're probably thinking of. First Blood Part 2 was originally written by James Cameron of Terminator fame, with Sylvester Stallone stepping in and adding a heavy rewrites to it, including adding far more action and a political tone to the film. Did somebody say, action? I'm ready. First Blood Part 2 directly follows the original film, with Rambo in prison and Troutman returning once again to recruit Rambo into returning to Vietnam to save some potential POWs in exchange for a pardon. Trusting Troutman, Rambo agrees, thrusting him directly into Vietnam this time around, where he ends up murdering a whole lot of people. Like, really? So. Many. People. He briefly gets a partner, the intelligence agent Ko Bao, who helps him find the camp in the first place before being separated from him. After Rambo finds POWs and helps one in particular escape, he's betrayed by one of his own and Troutman's superior, Marshall Murdoch, who orders everyone to leave Rambo to die as he doesn't want to deal with the political upheaval finding living POWs in Vietnam in the 80s would cause. Rambo is captured and tortured by Soviet troops who have been supplying the Vietnamese, only to be sprung out thanks to, well, himself. Oh, and uh, Ko Bao, I guess. But mostly himself. And then, the greatest moment in cinema. You take me with you? Seconds. It is exactly 14 seconds after the touching scene between Rambo and Kobao that she gets shot and dies. This film is incredible. After that is a non-stop action fest, including a helicopter battle, which is all kind of ironic considering Stallone was the one who specifically made it so Rambo didn't kill anyone in the first film. The death toll in this film is staggering as was the film's success. While First Blood had grossed $125 million worldwide, First Blood Part II more than doubled that, grossing $300 million worldwide. Critically, the film was panned, but as it was so successful, it meant Rambo would be alive and well for a third film. If you thought First Blood Part II was off the walls insane over-the-top action, let me introduce you to the greatest scene in Rambo 3 right off the bat. It's beautiful. 
Okay, so how did it get here? After First Blood Part 2, Rambo is now living peacefully in Thailand. Well, mostly peacefully. When Troutman once again returns to ask Rambo for help, this time to help anti-Soviet fighters in Afghanistan during the Soviet-Afghan War, Rambo refuses, and Troutman goes in on his own, only to get captured. Getting word of this, Rambo goes in and does a whole lot of murdering to save Troutman, and then a whole lot more murdering after that to help the people of Afghanistan fighting against the wicked, evil, devilish, demonic Soviets. And honestly, that's really all you need to know. Once again, the film received negative critical reviews, but was successful at the box office grossing $189 million this time around. More importantly though, by this point Rambo had become cemented in pop culture. The 1990 Guinness Book of World Records dubbed Rambo 3 the most violent film ever made, with 221 acts of violence and 108 on-screen kills. Rambo was majorly spoofed in 1993 by Hot Shots Part 2, which directly references this. Along with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone and his character of Rambo became the embodiment of the 80s action star, ripped big muscled men shooting guns and obliterating people in their path. His influence was so far spread that President Nixon at points would reference Rambo, and there may be more subtle nods such as the cover to the video game Contra, where, and this is unconfirmed, it's just my suspicion, the character on the right with the red bandana is likely an homage to Rambo, especially as the entire game takes place in a jungle with shirtless, muscle-bound characters. It's just what's in. I forgot my body oil, all right? While the second and third installments of the Rambo franchise were released in quick succession, with all three films releasing in the 80s, it wasn't until 2008 that Rambo would be revisited in his fourth installment, titled... just... Rambo. Part of the reason it took so long for this installment was Sylvester Stallone's own hesitation. In the 90s, a script was brought to him, but he shot it down stating he didn't want to make action movies anymore. He also felt there wasn't a good enough story that made sense to return to the character of Rambo. This finally changed in the late 2000s. While Stallone had directed previous Rocky movies, this would be his first time directing a Rambo film. I never thought I'd end up directing a Rambo film because Rambo in itself, all the first blood, is a very, very physical film and it has a big camera as opposed to Rocky, which is pretty tight. And then, well, the truth is I didn't want to do this one either. I thought, wow, this should be, how am I going to do this? I'm really not prepared at all. I don't really have a take on this. I'm not feeling it yet. Ah, what if the film was directed by Rambo? The camera is never steady, but it's not overly active either. It's, it's just, it's alive, it's prowling. In this outing, Rambo is retired back to Thailand where he makes a living catching snakes and giving people boat rides. A missionary group hires Rambo to ferry them to Burma, where they intend to provide aid to Karen tribes people amidst the Karen conflict. This leads them directly into the dangers of the raging civil war, and the missionary group ends up getting captured by a SPDC officer, or State Police and Development Council officer, who leads a small army that slaughter people to rule them by fear. The missionary's pastor hires a small mercenary group to save the missionaries, and Rambo to guide them. Rambo ends up joining the mercenaries and then the Karen rebels in order to sneak in and save the group. All of this leads to some of my personal favorite action in the series, with a tension high as the group tries to evade detection, and then the standard insane Rambo action, although somehow slightly more grounded, ensues as they're discovered. And I mean slightly. I'm just saying that there's none of this. There is, however, a whole lot of this. Due to its portrayal of the Burma military, the Burmese government banned the film upon its release. On the other side, the film boosted the morale of the Karen National Liberation Army, who have even taken quotes from the film as rallying cries. Live for nothing, or die for something. Similar to the previous Rambo outings, critical reception was mostly negative. Which is a shame, as it's honestly my favorite one. And I'm curious if I'm the only one who feels that way, or if any of you watching feel that way too. 
Like the other Rambo films, despite its critical reception, the fourth installment was also a box office success, earning $113 million worldwide. In 2009, plans for a fifth film were started, Rambo 5 The Savage Hunt. However, this was continually postponed until 2016, when Stallone announced this was no longer in the works. But in 2018, Rambo Last Blood was announced for 2019 and releases this month. So will it follow the trend to be received negatively by critics, yet be a box office success, or will this one finally break into critics' hearts? Only time will tell. Let us know what your favorite Rambo film was and if you have a favorite scene. Also, are you looking forward to Last Blood? And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.